Welcome to Forward Focus. In each episode, we're helping you take another step toward becoming a more effective, well-rounded leader. I'm your host, John Reich, and in today's episode, we're having a conversation about specific steps you can take to level up the influence you have as a leader. We can all think of a leader who's had a profound influence on our career, on our lives, and on where we're heading in life. If you were to take a moment and reflect on who's had a profound impact on your development, you probably would be able to think of one to two people that come to mind that have had a direct impact on where you are today. In John C. Maxwell's book, How Successful People Lead, he outlines beautifully the five levels of leadership and how that level correlates directly to your influence in an organization. The five levels are simple. So today we're going to talk about those five levels, and then I'm going to give you 10 things to consider as insights so you can look at your own leadership and assess what are the changes, approaches, or adjustments that you need to make to level up your influence as a leader. Okay. So what are the five levels of leadership? Well, there's positional, then permission, then production, then people development, and then pinnacle. So let's break, break this down. First off, positional leadership. Positional leadership is people follow you because they have to. In other words, they're following somebody because it's their boss or it's their manager, right? This is the lowest level in leadership development. It's the entry level. The only thing that gives a person influence over the organization or over a person is their job title. And by the way, I want to be clear. There's nothing wrong with having a leadership position or having a title, right? So in, in, in essence, if this is where you stop growing as a leader, you're just a boss. You're not a true leader. Um, it reminds me of a story of George Washington. Um, there were tracks being laid and there was a lieutenant barking out commands and barking out orders to his soldiers. And this stranger rode up on a horse and said to the lieutenant, is this really the best way that you can motivate your men to to lay the tracks? And he said, if you think you can do better, why don't you hop off your horse and lay the tracks? And so the stranger did. And he rallied the, the soldiers around him and they were able to accomplish the goal in less time than previously allocated. And the stranger hopped back on his horse and rode up to the lieutenant when it was completed, and it was General George Washington. And he said to the lieutenant, next time you feel that your position stops you from accomplishing a task, let me know and I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. I think that's a great story that's true leadership versus just a boss or a title, right? He got into the trenches and was a servant leader, and he had influence on his men. When positional leaders at this level one, this entry level, when they ask for extra time or extra effort, they rarely get it. Um, This is the leader that consistently scratches his head and says, why can't I ever get my people to stay an extra half hour or work until the job is actually done? It's because they don't respect your influence. They're not bought into a a larger uh, purpose or position. Last thing about positional leadership, and again, this is the foundation for all five levels, so we're going to spend the most time on it. Positional leadership is the only level that does not require extra ability or effort to achieve. Uh, Think of it this way. Anybody can be appointed to a position, right? So when you think of positional leadership, think of a dictator. Think of somebody that just gives them carte blanche to do what they need to do, and they appoint, you know, all of their people into different powerful positions. Okay, so that's what positional leadership is. The next level on leadership is permission. This is where people follow because they want to. They have a desire to follow you based on your relationship with them. When you like people and you treat them as individuals who have value, you begin to develop true influence with them. Another way to word this, this is when you start to see trust form. Um, This is when you have somebody say to you, hey, do you have a minute? I want to talk to you about something that happened this weekend. Or, I'd like to get your advice on how you would approach X. That is true trust. That's relationship, right? 
your environment on your team becomes more positive. In fact, it's more positive for the team everywhere, at home, at work, when you're volunteering, when you're at on your commute home or commute in, you're positive because you're like, I like the team I'm working with. I'm building and cultivating a relationship. Leaders discover who their people are at this level. They build solid and longer lasting relationships. Um, so at this level, I want to give you an example. You'll know what your favorite meal is of the core people on your team. You'll know how many children each person have and what are their hobbies, passions, or sports. Does you know your team member like to travel? There's different unique things that you'll know deeper than just what they do at a nine to five type job. Here's a truth about level two. You can like people without leading them, but you cannot lead people well until you take an interest and you like each other. It's just a fact. To get the fullest amount of le- uh, fullest amount out of leading somebody, you need to like and respect each other and know each other deeper than just a, I'm your boss, do what I say. So I want you to think of at this level, this is where you see a lot of like nonprofit volunteers and leaders of nonprofits that can rally volunteers time and time again to go the extra mile, to stay longer, because it's about something bigger than just, you know, that nine to five role, if you will. It could be finishing that Habitat for Humanity house and saying, hey, we have two hours left of work. I, I know we said we'd, done by, we'd be done by Saturday at six o'clock, but let's get this house done. And they stay till eight o'clock and they finish the house, right? Um, so that's a, a, a summary on what level two of permission people choose to follow you. Okay, number three. This is the production level of leadership, production. People follow you because of what you've done for the organization. Now here's the the negative side of this. This is the most tempting level for leaders to stop growing at. It's I've absolutely performed quarter over quarter. My sales results are at the highest level, so I'm promoted to, you know, sales manager. Well, to really be a true leader, you need to keep performing through the team and maintaining or even growing the production of what you did when you were before you were promoted, right? So it's all based on your results. It's based on achievement. So if you think about your business or organization right now, what are your core metrics that you must accomplish or do for you to say, okay, my business is thriving, it's growing, my organization is absolutely achieving? Well, leaders keep that in mind. Leaders empower their staff to achieve. They say, what can I do to help you hit your goal? Do you have a training opportunity? Is it a skill opportunity? Where is the gap if we're not hitting that goal? This is where influence and credibility come together. You've started to gain influence at level two with the relationship and the credibility is there because you've achieved. You've hit production levels. Things get done, morale improves. It's a lot of fun when you're in an organization where you're succeeding at a high level and you're achieving, right? Profits are going up, client reviews are coming in, five star time and time again. I want you to write this next piece down. This is where leaders become change agents. Well, what's a change agent? This is uh, is somebody that is in an organization that takes on the tough issues the thorny problems that may exist. Oh, that's always been an issue. We've never been able to break through that ceiling. Well, this leader at level three takes on that issue and is able to help solve it. And all of a sudden, the organization or team breaks through. I'll give you an example. Maybe somebody comes into a role, they've built and cultivated relationships, and now they're starting to achieve in the core metrics of that business. And the issue was, you know what? We've always had a hard time staffing um, different positions at our different locations on a regular and consistent basis. We always seem to be having people call off or no show. And so maybe this change agent looks at the incentive for somebody to work. They look at how the person working is being compensated and they change the, they adjust the schedule to say, if you're working and you accomplish these things, you're bonus X. And, and then all of a sudden over the next 90 days, the no shows decline the morale of the team improves and that little tweak in how somebody's compensated and paid to work those extra hours on the weekends, for example, it it just changed an issue that's been going on for years. That's what a change agent is. 
people achieve at a whole nother level of effectiveness. And so what I want you to think of level three, being a change agent and producing or performing, this is a coach of an all-star athlete or a coach in a position. So what I mean by that is maybe I played baseball for 15 years and I was an all-star eight years out of the 15 and I've now retired from playing and I've been put into a coaching position where I manage all the outfielders on a team or maybe I'm even the head coach of the entire baseball team. Because of how I produced as an athlete, I've been given an opportunity. I have the influence and credibility because I've cultivated relationship. I have the opportunity to be a change agent and lead the team to the next level. So number three is where we see a lot of coaches and athletes. They're not always successful though, are they? If they choose to stop growing and only rely on what they've done in the past, they will not be respected and have influence long term. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Number four is people development. It's one of my favorite levels, people development. People follow you because of what you've done for them. People follow you because of what you've done for them. This is empowerment versus just power. Empowerment versus just power. You use your positional relationships and results to invest in the people that follow you and you develop them to become leaders in their own right. I'm going to say that again. In this level, you use your position of leadership and in your relationships with those around you to invest in the followers in your organization and develop them into leaders in their own right. In other words, the easy way to say it, level four leaders reproduce a version of themselves. It's a fine line, right? It's empowering somebody to be a leader in their own right. It's It's giving them the tools and the steps forward to succeed, but it's not micromanaging. It's not saying you have to do it this way. This is the way to work it. It's saying, here's what I have found that's worked well. Here are the strengths, skills, and talents that you bring to this role and how you can use those and maximize your leadership ability. I'm here to help you achieve whatever your next goal might be. This is where we see teamwork and collaboration just skyrocket. This is where people, have you ever heard the term, uh, that person owns their role? They, they own the role. They, they take accountability and ownership of getting things done. This is where ownership truly kicks in. Everybody's performance improves because there's ownership and leadership of everybody's role. In other words, level four leaders change lives of the people they lead. And these relationships are typically lifelong. I want to give you an example here. Tom Brady. For years, the argument was Bill Belichick, Tom Brady. After two decades in New England, in six Super Bowls, Tom Brady exited that organization and joined the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. For the the season of 2020 into 2021 for NFL, everyone argued, was it Bill or Tom? Who is the reason that all these Super Bowls achieved and happened? Well, we saw what happened in Super Bowl in February of 2021, right? Tom Brady won a Super Bowl with his team. That's level four leadership. He had credibility before. He got to know his teammates. If you talk to, if you see any interview from his teammates, he took the time to get to know them. He re-recruited people out of retirement, like Gronkowski, and said, this is your role in the organization. Here's how we can succeed. He called Antonio Brown, who had issues on and off the field with several different organizations and said, here's the one condition where you're going to be welcomed into our world. You can help us win a Super Bowl, but here's the conditions. And it happened. He has fundamentally changed the direction of that organization and the people's lives in it, hasn't he? Tom Brady's a great reminder of a level four leader, which takes us into our last level, pinnacle. People follow you because of who you are and what you represent. Pinnacle, people follow you because of who you are and what you represent. Now, before I get into the description on this, I'll give you some people to consider. This is Abe Lincoln. This is Mother Teresa. This is Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, this is the upper level of leadership. It transcends a role, a job, an organization, even an industry, right? This is top tier. John Maxwell is known as a preeminent leader. He's at the pinnacle level. This is the highest and most difficult level to achieve. 
this level not only requires effort and skill and, and, and being intentional, it also, truth be told, it requires a super high level of talent. And that's why so few people hit this level. You can develop skills. You can work harder, right? You can be really intentional, but we're all blessed with a certain level of talent in a variety of areas. Naturally gifted leaders make it to this level. Level five leaders consistently develop the people around them to level four. No matter what organization or what job, every time you look at this person, anywhere this person's gone, they've left their mark. And as they've left that organization and moved on to another opportunity, there's level four leaders in, in, in place. Level four leaders, remember, are empowering, using their influence, achieving at the highest level, they've been reproduced, if that makes sense, as a form of the leader. This is the gold standard of pinnacle leadership. There's, there's only so many Abe Lincolns, Mother Teresas, and Martin Luther King Juniors, right? So this is more aspirational than anything, but it's a great reminder that the journey never ends, that you could be a level four leader and there's still room for growth and improvement. Okay, so now that we've gone through the five P's, the five levels of leadership, I just want to remind you, they are positional, which is entry level. People follow because they have to. There's permission. People follow because they want to. This is where we start to see trust and relationships built. There's production. People follow you because of what you've done for the organization. You've achieved at a high level. There's number four, which is people development. People follow you because of what you've done for them personally. You've helped transform their lives or their career or what they've done in life um, for others. And then number five, pinnacle, the rarest of them all. People follow you because of, of who you are and what you represent. Now that we've looked at the five levels of leadership, we're going to look at 10 insights, 10 considerations. So we're going to kind of shift the conversation here. Now it's going to be around, okay, I get that there's five levels of leadership. I understand that there's probably growth opportunity for me in my organization, whether I'm a, a solo act looking to make my first hire or I'm managing a team of 10 folks. How does that apply to me specifically as a leader? Well, here's some insights for you to consider, some questions for you to ask yourself, um, for you to be able to say, what can I do over the next 12 months to improve my leadership ability. Here's the first insight. You never move up a level and leave the other one behind. You never move up a level and leave the other one behind. So what that means is you build on what you've previously known. Just because you build a relationship or help develop another leader doesn't mean you still don't have your position or your title that you achieved on level one, right? The way I like to think about this for an analogy is if you're going to the gym, and all of a sudden you're realizing that the 30 pound weights aren't enough and you go to 40 pound weights, that's a new challenge. That's a new level up, but it doesn't mean that you can't lift the 30 pound weights. You've built upon what you've done and accomplished. And now you're at that 40 pound level. You can always go back to the 30 pound weight. Number two, this one's so critical. And I've learned this lesson the hard way. You're not on the same level with every person. So if you're at a level three with somebody, maybe they've been in your organization for a couple of years, you've built a relationship with them, you've produced results together, you're achieving at a high level, that relationship is not going to be the same as somebody that you hired last month. That person you hired last month is probably at a level one positional respect and relationship with you. Now, you may, of course, grow that relationship to a level three, but keep in mind, you're maintaining your level three relationship with the employee that's been with you for three or four years, and you're cultivating a relationship of somebody that just joined your organization. Here's another example that's not organizational or business-based. A great dad versus just being a father that's an absentee father. A great dad could be a level four, right? He's developing a future citizen that will be thriving in society. He loves his children. He provides for his family. He's a great partner to his wife versus an absentee father who had a child with some woman or his wife, and he's never there. He's always on the road. He's not coming home after work. He's going out and spending his time elsewhere. Those are two different levels. They're both fathers, but we can all agree that one's performing as a dad 
and the other is performing as an absentee father. So effective leaders have to interact with their followers. And there's three questions that John Maxwell outlines that I think are just brilliant. And so here's something that you could ask yourself if you're wondering, where am I as a leader with the different people that I interact with? Number one, ask yourself, where are you with each specific follower? Think of the people in your organization, think of the people in your business, and ask yourself, am I a one, two, three, four, or five with that person? And do that for everybody in your organization. Number two, if I were to ask the follower that same question, would the numbers match? So in other words, if I gave a number three to Sally Sue, if I went to Sally Sue and said, well, where's your relationship with John? Would she also give me a three? Or would she say, no, he's more of a one. That's insight, right? It tells me, okay, she only respects me because of the position. What do I need to do to go from one to two? I need to work on my relationship with Sally Sue. And then lastly, ask yourself this question. Where are the followers in their own leadership development? So if they're managing other people, if they're having influence, even if they don't have a title of leader, but they're managing others, right? And having an influence, ask yourself, where are they in their development? How are they showing up for your organization? Are people only looking at them as that's their title? Or do you see them having an influence in relationship building with people from all walks of life in your organization? I'll leave you with this thought at the second uh, point, which again is you're not at the same level with every person. You don't achieve leadership. It's a constant and ongoing process. It's like running a race every day improving your ability. It's an endurance test. Leadership is endurance. Okay, so if it's so difficult and there's so much endurance to this, why would I do it? Well, here's the third insight to consider. The higher you go from level one to five, the easier it is to influence and lead others. Your influence continues to increase as you level up, which allows you to accomplish more. So think about this. At the lower levels, your limited influence, you have limited leadership ability. The greater your influence or levels, the greater your effectiveness. So for example, if somebody came into an organization, they were given the title of manager, right? And they started setting all these goals of what we could do as a sales quota without understanding the systems, the people, where they've been the last three years, without sitting down with the core team and saying, What do you like about the organization? What do you like about your job? What would you change if you could? Okay, I want to have an ongoing conversation with you over the next three months to really build a plan together. And in 90 days, we're going to roll out our goals for the next quarter. Do you see how the two are very and vastly different? Here's what the goals are. I'm your boss versus let's partner together and figure out what we need to do. It's not easy to continue to climb and to grow. If it was easy, everyone would do it. So please, I want to remind you, don't get caught up in, I've already done the work. I've, I've sold more units than anybody else. So now I've made it. At most, you're at level three now. You have credibility and some influence, but now it's your job to help cultivate leaders under you. Which brings me to my fourth insight. The higher you go, the more time and commitment is required at each level to win. Nobody achieves greatness by doing the minimum. This isn't easy, yet it's incredibly worth it. The more dedicated that you need to be in each of your roles every day will have massive payouts for your people. I want you to think about it this way. If I'm running a race or I'm training to run for a race and I'm plateauing at that 10 minute mile, I can't increase and in, in get below the 10 minute mile pace for my half marathon, let's say. There's a lot of different factors that I need to look at as I'm training. My diet, my recovery, am I starting too quickly and being burned out in the race? Do I have the right equipment? And so I'm looking at all these different areas and the key is I'm measuring my performance in relation to the goal. Well, the same thing should be happening in your leadership. If you feel like you've hit a ceiling, if you feel like you're not breaking through, are you taking the time and the commitment to level up your skills, to truly invest in your relationships with your people and help them accomplish more. If you're not time blocking that in your organization on a weekly basis, 
you're going to hit a plateau. You're going to hit that lid, right? And that may be where you are today. Maybe a simple adjustment is adding 60 minutes a week of leadership development to your calendar. That's four hours a month. That's 48 hours a year. That's two days worth of content a year if you just put an hour a week on your schedule to research and become a better leader. Like John Maxwell's book, How Successful People Lead, or like Get Forward Focused, right? Okay, number five. Moving up occurs slowly, but going down the other way can happen really quickly. So this is that old adage of Rome wasn't built in a day, right? Um, It takes years to build a reputation and just minutes to destroy it. Well, the leadership levels work in a very similar way. Here's the benefit though. So first I'll give you an example on that. Let's say you've been climbing the levels of leadership and you're at level three and you want to set a really lofty sales goal or a, a, a high metric for the team to hit and the team doesn't hit it. Well, naturally, people are going to look to you as the leader and say that we didn't hit the goal that we set. And so you may lose a peg and go back down to, well, I still appreciate this leader. I have a relationship with this leader and I respect this leader, but they clearly can't perform at the level they need to to hit the goal. So now you're at a level two, whereas maybe three or four months ago when you set that goal, people viewed you as a level three of I respect and the the credibility of results, right? But here's the cool thing. The levels, if you fall down a level, the next level beneath you is a safety net. You typically can stay at that level and re-engage the person that's following you to go to that next level again. So it's not like you drop from level four to level one. Those are very rare. Um, Typically, when you see something like that, it's somebody that is embezzling from a company, has been accused of some egregious crime, something outrageous that it's very clear that this person made um, intentional mistakes and it hurt the organization or it hurt their reputation. The only level that you can't really have a safety net from is level one, right? So if you're in a position and you continue to make mistakes, um, you continue to call the ball incorrectly, eventually you're going to be let go from the position, right? And somebody else will be put into that position to see if they can perform at a higher level. So just know that all the work you're putting in as you climb the levels, you do have a safety net um, if you are to fall back in any, in any position. And, and that's natural too, by the way. If you're not pushing the envelope and trying for new things and, and setting aggressive goals for your organization, your organization only has two opportunities, right? Growth or decline. There's no stagnant. A stagnant organization is in decline because they're not innovating and they're not going to that next level. So understand that it's it's natural to take those chances. It's just being aware of, okay, what do I need to do to year over year level up my leadership, even if I might take a step back from time to time because I was too aggressive in a certain area or I, um, I missed the mark in a certain point. Okay, number six, the higher you go, the greater the return. Um, you give more to get there, but you get more too, right? The higher that you go, you have more trust, deeper relationships, and you enter a phase of momentum. This is that that synergy you see of a synergy that you see, excuse me, of a team who is making a championship run in the playoffs and they can't be beat. Right. It's they they hit the home runs. They drain the three pointer. They throw the touchdown. It's unbelievable. It's like there's something special and you can feel that energy with that team. Well, they're in momentum. They're achieving, and it's like they could do this in their sleep. That's a team that's performing near pinnacle, at least at a level four, where the captains are working through their assistant captains that are working through you know, the, the, the teammates. Even the bench players are on the edge of the field cheering on the people on the field, right? The entire organization is all in to win this championship. Number seven, moving up requires growth. Now, I applaud you because you're here today and that means you're choosing to grow. You're being intentional with your growth. It's growth in your skills as well as your experiences. If you've ever heard of the phrase fail forward or fail often or fail fast, it's not that you want to consistently mess up and not learn from it. It's that when you do mess up or miss a target, you ask yourself, what can I take from this experience so I can be better next time, right? Skill growth is a choice. So is relationship development. 
you can choose to be better at these or not. I encourage you to look for role models that have come before you. One of my favorite lines is that experience is the best teacher. It doesn't have to be your own. You can learn from other people's experiences. You can apply what they've shared with you or what you've observed in your own experiences. See, we are limited on how much talent we all have. It's a natural thing that we're gifted, but there is no limit on how much we can work on ourselves and on others and the time that we focus on in improving a skill, a product, or relationship with somebody else. So again, it comes back to that idea of, are you being intentional with growing yourself? Speed of the leader, speed of the pack. If you feel your organizations hit a lid, start with yourself and ask yourself some questions around how intentional you're being in your growth. Number eight, not climbing the levels will limit you and of course your people. Remember, people naturally follow people that are stronger than themselves. So if you're not being followed to the level that you desire, you probably need to look within and say, am I building the relationships and trust? Are we performing at the level that we need to perform? And am I helping the people that follow me grow their leadership abilities? If you can't clearly identify those three things, you have some work to do as a leader. When leaders stop climbing, the two questions you can ask are, can they improve and will they improve? Can they improve is, do they have the endurance, the knowledge, the know-how, the skills to get to where they need to be? Will they improve is, do they want it? Will they admit that they need and have room to grow? Those are two very different things. On paper, a candidate can look phenomenal for a position, right? But they just don't have that thing. They don't have that passion. They don't have that thing, that intrinsic feeling of they're going to crush in this role, right? That's what this is talking about. Can they improve and will they improve? You can ask yourself that and your core teammates. All right, two more, two more. Number nine, when you change positions or organizations, you rarely stay at the same level. This is really tough for high achievers and top performers. Um, it's hard to look in the mirror and say, I've been a level four leader for five years in this organization. I've, I've taken you know, handfuls of people and elevated them to their next career opportunity. We're, we're, we're humming at all cylinders. And now I have this new opportunity and people barely respect me because of my position now. And I have to rebuild the relationships. I have to rebuild the trust, right? And I have to perform at this level to earn level three, level four leadership. Well, here's the thing. People don't recognize you as a level for a people developer if you haven't worked with them or earned that right. Each time you go through this process, you're with a new group of people in a new scenario, and you're going to gain a whole new set of skills. Level one positional leaders, so the people that are bosses and their managers, right? They're reluctant to have to start over or start a new role because they think of leadership as a destination, instead of a process. I'm going to repeat that. Level one leaders think of leadership as a destination. Like I've arrived, I've made it, right? Instead of looking at leadership as a process, as an ongoing journey, their hope is to get where they need to be once and just stay there. And that's not how leadership works. Great leaders are willing to relearn time and time again, leadership values, leadership skills and approaches because they understand that their leadership journey will almost always require them to restart at some point with a new hire, with a new client or contract, or maybe a new opportunity that the leader takes on with a new position. Here's the key though. You, you've built to a level four, right? And now I'm restarting at a level one in a new organization. I can use what I've learned to build to a level four in this organization. I can use that in my new role. So I should be able to climb the levels quicker. I should have experience and skills I've learned that will apply and be appropriate here. And I'll, I'll be able to achieve and accomplish quicker in the new opportunity. A silly example on this is think about how many pairs of shoes you have. Once you learn how to tie your shoes and put them on, you can do that with, you know, the 30 pair of shoes that you have, right? And every shoe might be a little different, but you know how to put them on and you know how to tie them. Well, it's the same thing in leadership. Once you've done it once, 
you have a roadmap, a template, and you just need to apply that to the new opportunity that you find yourself in. Okay, and number 10, you cannot climb the levels alone. Cannot stress this enough. If you think you're leading, but no one's following, then you're only taking a walk. One of my favorite quotes from John Maxwell. To truly succeed as a leader, you must help others follow you up on the levels. The entire process includes other people, and it, it's all about focusing on helping them achieve. And if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get everything that you want as a leader and more. There's only one way for you to find out your capacity as a leader. Accept this leadership challenge. Accept the fact that you have room to grow. You have room to run. Ask yourself these questions about your relationships with others, the credibility that you bring to an organization, and what you can do to help empower those beneath you in your organization to achieve more as leaderships in their own right. If you accept that challenge, the journey will be absolutely worth it and your team will accomplish things that you never even dreamed to be possible. Okay, so here's my call to action for you um, as you're listening to this content. There's an attached guide as a resource for you to review. I encourage you to look at that resource and ask yourself this question. Where do I start? I'd encourage you to think about what level of leadership are you at? Do people respect you because of your position? Because of the relationship you have with them? Credibility because of what you've achieved? Or are you developing leaders and you can actually quantify how you're doing that in your organization? Wherever you are, Know that's your starting point, and now you can begin your leadership journey. Remember, ask yourself, where am I in relationship with these people in my organization? One, two, three, four, or five. If I were to ask them the same question, what response would they give me? Remember the Sally Sue example. I rate a three, she rates me a two. There's a gap there. Clearly, I need to gain credibility with her because we have the relationship, but for some reason, she's ranking me a two, she doesn't see me as credible in the metrics or the achievement side. Why is that? Well, that's a great question to ask, isn't it? What can I do as a leader to gain that credibility? And then lastly, keep in mind always where the people in your organization are on their leadership journey. If you take these steps and you focus on leveling up your leadership, you will accomplish more as a leader. And I'm so excited to see you take that next step. If you found value in today's content, please be sure to subscribe so you never miss a lesson to be the leader that you deserve to be. And until next time, lead on.